I'm going to try to speak up this time to see if the sound is optimal. Hold on. It should be. Okay. So if you're dropping in today and you don't know who I am, I'm Hilda Larson. I'm the founder of uh, inspiredbyhilda.com. And I write books. I inspire. I write articles. I coach people. And my main mission is this. I want to make sure that you are inspired and that you have the tools to live the life that you need, that you want, that you desire, that you're, that you're ready for. Maybe that's the biggest clue right now is what you're ready for because it's all about the mind. And I am the raw food teacher and I am the cleanser, I'm the detox specialist. And still, I keep getting back to the mind. I want to drop in today because of this. Okay. So there's a fasting summit coming up, and we've been talking about fasting. People ask me about candida. People ask me about what I eat. People ask me about the raw food, and I think it is wonderful, and I love those questions. And that is ultimately where you want to go. It is ultimately the solution, cleansing your body, reclaiming your health. But why is it, I keep coming back to this, why is it that you're not? when the information is there. So I have written about self-sabotage, and I wanted to share with you today the four main identities that we have. And see if you have one of these that you resonate with, if you have one of these that are speaking to you, and this might be a clue that will put you further on your healing journey. Okay, so I have four that I see with my clients. You might have many, might have several, but there are four distinct ones, and they are the attention identity. They are the being worthy identity, or not being worthy. Uh, you have something called the fear of the new identity, and then of course, the disease identity. Let me, let me talk a little bit about all of those so that you can understand what I mean about this. Okay, I don't want to be all the way out there, but I'm sure you'll get it. So bear with me, okay? I'm not going to keep you here all day. <laughs> Just bear with me. I woke up this morning and I thought, oh my gosh, okay, I need to speak about this today. Because we are the conclusion of what we are living. And there is a reason, you see, why you're getting in your own way. There is a reason why you are not just driving, cruising along on your healing journey. There is reason why you read something and then you don't implement it. Or you try it even, or you start. You're just not getting there. You're just not getting to where you want to be. You, 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 you start binge eating, or you jump off the wagon, or you have some excuses. And they might not even feel like excuses because they're so valid. It is your life, you know? And the story you're telling is the story that you're believing. And what you believe in is what you're living. So let's look at the not being worthy identity, first of all. Now, why would someone believe that they're not worthy of help, for example? Why would someone sell, you know, tell themselves, I don't deserve help? Let me tell you something. When you grew up, or when we grew up, when most of us grew up, we have been told things that we have been storing in our subconscious mind. And the subconscious mind is the trigger here. This is not something you're going around telling yourself consciously. You're not walking around telling yourself, oh, you know, I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy of health and happiness. Heck, you are, and you know you are. To an extent, you know you are, but your subconscious is telling you differently because it is replaying everything that you have believed your whole life, you see. So when you were a, ch a child and someone told you that you couldn't have something or you weren't good enough, you know what? You believed it, and you still believe it. Yourself believe it. So here's an example of what would be typical if you were connecting with that identity or living that identity. Um, you would, for example, say that, well, you know, I can't do this cleanse because I cannot find the right food or my juicer isn't working or I live in a colder climate so I can't get food in the winter. So you see, for me, it is just difficult. For some, they can be in the exact same situation, living in the exact same environment. For them, it is not a problem. For them, they find the solution. And no, I 
I'm not talking about if you have different setting, if you have more money, more support, more organic fruits available. No, I'm talking about two people in the exact same environment, the exact same situation will react differently. Some will work through it, move forward, do what's needed, and some will not. And this is what I find interesting. So if I can poke you to the point where you can, you know, think about this, go within yourself and say, hey, you know, does this resonate with me? Am I one of these people? Because if you are, then you know what to work on, right? Then you can find support to untangling the knot within you that's holding you back. That's one, okay? The not being worthy. So then we have the fear of the new identity. Now, why would someone fear the new so much that it was holding them back literally? Why would someone fear change more than they would invite and have? <clears throat> I'll tell you. You know, when you start a healing journey and you really go digging within yourself, we know that the body, the mind, and the soul, you can't separate them. So anything that is not serving you will just fall away. It's a happy thing, but things will change. So even the people in your life will leave. You might find another job that's better for you. Better for you. It will make you more happy. But still, it changes. And the fear of loss of the consequence that comes with the change. We start seeing that things that we thought were good for us maybe wasn't. And yet we want to hold on to that familiarity. So we fear change so much that we hold ourselves back from healing. So what is an example of this? I love examples. So you can see. So if you are the person that has these statements that says, oh, no, I'm feeling all better now. I don't need this anyway. You know, or, oh, no, no, no. It's, um, I started, but you see, uh, I don't have that symptom anymore. You're making excuses for moving forward that is very valid, but you are afraid of the change. Okay? Oh, good grief. Your life is going to tell you which one to be, to be put into. Then you have the attention identity, which is the identity that most people would think like, oh, no, 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 that's not me. You know, I'm not holding myself sick for attention. I mean, that would be crazy, right? No. Remember when you were little and you were sick? Remember when you got those extra cookies or Coke, you know, um, you got to get home from school, watching TV, getting extra cuddles, people were, you know, paying attention to you, and now when you're sick, you might go to the hospital, people are sending you cards, flowers, and I'm not saying you're doing this consciously. I mean, grown-up people, we know better. You're not going to keep yourself sick consciously, consciously, for flowers or for more attention or for more love. Remember, these are subconscious patterns. These are patterns we don't even know that we have. Okay? We don't even know that we have them. Okay. I hear people are talking about the sound still. So I have mine on the highest setting, and I, I, I hope that you can do that too, and that that will be good enough. Um, that's all I can do for now. Thank you. For, thank you for letting me know, though. Okay. So back to the attention identity. Look back at what your soul has been experiencing. If you have experienced a lack of love when you grow up, grew up, if, if that was what you were getting attention from, not feeling well, then that would be a pattern that you're going through still. So an example for this would be um, like, so this isn't working for me. Um, I've tried everything. Because then you're kind of putting yourself, you're letting yourself off the hook and you're saying that this is going to be my fate, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to suffer. I'm always going to suffer. Don't have to. But if that is what you believe, then that would be a truth. We are living what we, what we believe to be true. Believe it or not. <laughs> okay. The last one. The dis-ease identity. I saw this so clearly. It was freaking me out. Okay, let me start with this story. Let me start with my story. Just a little bit of this, okay? I got so sick. I couldn't move. 
I couldn't get out of bed. I couldn't do anything. I was filled with medication. I was almost dead. Long story short, this is, I, I, can, I can show you. Okay, if you want. If you, if, you, if you don't know who I am and I haven't watched my videos or anything, okay, so this is, this is my story. I'm not going to bore you with this one, okay? From hell to inspired. So I go into the hospital and meet all these beautiful souls. And they are so connected because they go in and out of the same hospital. Uh, I was diagnosed with severe rheumatoid arthritis. So these people are coming back for new joints, for new medication, treatments every year, several times a year. But there was a community. I met this woman in there that had the diagnosis of, I think it was fibromyalgia or something in, similar like that. And the doctor had told her now that she didn't have that anyway. She didn't have that diagnosis. And she was furious. That was her identity. I mean, her whole life was built around that community. You know, people that suffer from the same labeled disease, which is, excuse my French, bullshit. bullshit. It is, okay. Rant over. People make community and they make new friends and they make that their life. You know, it is not going to walk you towards healing, to go to the forum for arthritis, you know, arthritic people, if you have arthritis. What you have to look towards is health. So if you're stuck in that wanting like-minded in the disease um, community that has the same label that you have, this is something you need to look at because you have to break free. You are identifying yourself with that. And it, it puts you into um, a comfort zone. And you might even be good at it. You might have a lot of information you can share with these people, you know. But you're still in the same energy. And, and, and the example behind this is that once you start thinking about getting well, it's like you have to change your friends. Because you've been holding on to the sickness, you see. And the reason behind this is not because you want to stay sick. Like any other identity, it's never about that. This particular one I, I've seen is the reflection of the need to belong. You know, people that have, you know, maybe walked their whole life, never belonged, never felt community, never felt it was a part of, of anything. And now they are a part of something. They're a part of a whole movement. But as long as we identify ourselves with any of these patterns or identities or false beliefs, we're holding ourselves back. And it's called self-sabotage. Because you are then the one, as always, that is holding yourself away from true health. You see, nobody else can do that. No family member, no doctor, no anyone that you see as an authority, anyone that you see as an opponent, anyone that you see as a critic, anyone that you see is so important in your life that they have an opinion more valid than your own. None of it. None of them is ever going to take your place. They do not have the leading role in your movie. They are not the one that's going to get the Oscar or not. They are not the ones creating this. You are. Every bit of it. Are you creating your disease? Well, at least you have the opportunity to walk towards healing. And I really want to get back with you very soon to talk about Candida. So watch for that. Fasting. Like I said, I just spoke to the, on the Fasting Summit. Coming out again. I'm with these great speakers from all over the world. So yay to that. Shout out to uh, the people uh, at the Fasting Summit. But today, this is important, okay? Because this is where it starts. This is where you have to start. And this was my, my third book was mostly about all of the things that actually came first. Because now I could pull back from my whole walk through all of this and see the whys and the hows and the why not. I can speak about raw food and vitality and health and energy 
and monkeys and bananas and cows and, you know, until hell freezes over. If you are not ready to embark what you need to do yourself, it's not going to matter what you, what you read or what you see or what you hear. You have to connect with yourself and you have to be bold enough to go inward. So if you sit down in meditation and you really take in what I just told you, see if there is any of these that you can find connection to, any of these um, identities. So which one was it? The not being worthy, the fear of the new, the attention, and the dis-ease. Okay, so I'm going to let you go, but I want you to let this day be the day that you speak to yourselves in a way that will put you out of these, okay? So I wrote some uh, affirmations the other day as well, you know, in a, in a different setting. Uh, I think I put it up on the... Uh, uh, on the membership site, yeah. So if you're not a member yet, you need to be a member. Go to my website and just click on become a member. Okay, really quick, because I think this video is closing. So, okay, tell yourself, I deserve help. Repeat after me, I deserve help. I love myself. I never need to get sick again, ever. I am worthy. I'm always loved. It is always a good time for me to embark my healing, 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 healing at all levels, uh, journey. Being healthy is everything to me, and I am willing to let go of everything that is not serving me. It's freedom. Health is freedom. True health is true wealth, and you are so worth it. So if you're going to take any message from this video, and I thank you so much for listening. And I thank you so much for following me. And I thank you so much for being on my tribe, subscribing to my newsletter, reading my books, and especially to my clients. I love you, every single one of you. So if you like this video, I would love for you to share it. And I would love to come back and speak soon. Have a wonderful day. I love you. Namaste. Bye.